A very good evening and warm welcome to one and all present over here. There are 312 participants right now joined through the Zoom and there are many more who are looking at the live streaming on YouTube. Thakur College of Science and Commerce welcomes you all of you. The journey began in 1990 with the degree college and with this particular journey of 23 years, the college has reached to the level where the college has been granted the autonomous status by the UGC New Delhi. The college has completed three cycles of the accreditation by NAC. The college has been granted the best college award for the academic year 2018-19 by the University of Mumbai and many more accolades. So with this brief introduction of the college, may I now kindly request Honorable Principal Madam, Dr. Mrs. C.T. Chakravarti to give her introductory remark and welcome the audience. Dr. Mrs. C.T. Chakravarti. Thank you, Vinit. Uh, I, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I cordially welcome the resource person, Dr. Supriya Balirao from Interactive Research School for Health Affairs, Bharat Bharti Vidyapit, Dr. Girish Tillu from Center for Complementary and Integrated Health, and all participants of today's national webinar on boosting immunity with Ayurveda. Within a short span of time, we have received overwhelming participation from the web for the webinar of around 600 faculties. Right now, I can see 324 participants have already joined for the webinar of our researchers and students from different parts of India, from Maharashtra, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, Haryana, Karnataka, West Bengal, and Assam. This high number highlights two facts. First one, COVID-19 has truly uplifted technology-driven wave of knowledge dis dissemination. Second, such a webinar of Ayurveda was found interesting by many academicians from various fields in India. Ayurveda, the ancient wisdom of medicine, has withstood the test of time and is relevant today, even after 7,000 years. It is our proud privilege and a valuable treasure. In recent times, when our WhatsApp groups are flood flooding with so-called Ayurvedic recipes, we should not be misled and should get the correct knowledge from the right resources. We look forward to hearing the uh, experts and the stalwart in the field of Ayurveda. Once again, I welcome the guest and also all the delegates who have participated from all part of India. I welcome you to the Thakur family and uh, over to Vinit Vedya. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. You are the force and guiding for torch for this entire program to be organized. With your support, your ideas, we are all organizing such kind of webinars where we are connecting to the people at the India level and also at the globe level. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Now, may I kindly request Dr. Santo Singh, the IQC coordinator of Thakur College of Science and Commerce, to give us the brief about the college as well as the work of IQC. Over to Dr. Santo Thank you, Vinit. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. IQC started in the year of 2005 as per the guideline of NAC. And since then, we are taking all the quality initiative for the quality education, uh, various environmental related issues, women empowerment and community-based services. We are constantly taking a various in initiative for skill and talent enhancement program during COVID-19. And we have organized so many program in this duration for the upliftment of the knowledge. Uh, the topic is very, very relevant here, boosting immunity with Ayurveda. And I welcome the delegates and uh, all the participants for this. Ayurveda is inherited uh, since our ancient culture and tradition. And even PM Modi in his appeal, he has mentioned that word to all uh, the Varanasi people here, Kana pite rahiye or immunity level badhega. Now, the, he hasn't explained here what is the meaning of Kana because it is inherited. We all know here the meaning of Kana, what are the importance of uh, black turmeric, uh, the, the black, uh, uh, this uh, Tulsi leaf and uh, the turmeric uh, importance here. So uh, I welcome Dr. Supriya Bhale Rao, Dr. Giris here for uh, this wonderful session. And I hope for all the participants, this is going to be a wonderful session. Thank you very much. 
thank you so much santosh sir for this kind of a brief introduction about the iqsc because this particular webinar is organized uh, with the collaboration with iqsc of tcsc and now may i kind of request dr aparna deshmukh to take over and give the introduction of dr supriya bhale rao the first invited talk of this particular webinar over to dr aparna deshmukh thank you vinay sir good afternoon all uh, a warm welcome to all present here at the pres at the outset i would like to thank our management for providing the platform to organize such a national webinar on boosting immunity with ayurveda our special thanks to our beloved principal who is the driving force even during the, uh, the lockdown period to unlock ideas and to strive on the verge of the fourth phase of lockdown we are still pondering over the arrival of vaccines and uh, we are facing challenges now the answer that emerges to prevent the diseases is protection or social distancing but how long one day or the other we have to step out and the only way is to our immunity to resist diseases by developing immunomodulation or immuno stimulation now when we are facing the challenge of covid 19 and we are awaiting helplessly and egolessly the answers from modern medicine it is a time for us to look into our own medicinal system of ayurveda we should look at the ancient system with modern scientific perspective the term ayurveda itself explains ved or knowledge of life the fundamental principles are based on maintaining healthy body mind and soul during my phd time uh, under the doctor uh, under the able guidance of late shadadini dhanokar at ayurveda research center uh when i was studying immunomodulatory effect of phenospora cordifolia uh that boosted my interest yes, and uh, that was the time when i realized that how immense the nature, nature uh, the treasure of knowledge is and how little we know about it now it is the time that we not only understand and execute remedies but also share to the world for the benefit of the mind today we have experts from ayurveda research it is my pleasure to introduce the first speaker for the day dr supriya bhalera who is done her phd in ayurveda and md phd as well as pg diploma in bioethics she is presently working as associate professor at interactive research school of health affairs irsha at bharti vidyapeeth and she is senior research she is also worked as senior research officer at sharadini dhanukar ayurveda research center she has immense experience a lot of publication lot of uh, awards as well as she has been very interestingly and actively working for ethics committee of sipla palliative care and training center pune at ayur uh, also at bmk ayurved mahavidyalay belgaum she is associate editor of ayurveda research journal and she has lot of credits to her record including publication of articles almost five and books and chapters i uh, request now to Hello. Yeah, may I kindly request Dr. Supriya Bhale Rao to please start with our invited talk, Dr. Supriya Bhale Rao. Parnamam, could you check uh, her uh, volume level uh, is un at an unmute st status, or you can uh, make him co-host. He is co-host. She is the yeah. co-host also. I unmuted Hello? her, Santosh sir, just now. Yeah. Hello, am I audible? 
yes yes ma'am yeah uh, good evening everybody and uh, welcome you all uh, to this uh, interesting session first of all i would like to thank the administration of college for organizing a webinar on such an interesting uh, topic um, i have started my screen sharing uh, i think it is visible to everybody hello hello uh madam it is not visible sir <laughs> Supriya, madam, please share your screen. Yeah, I have started sharing, but uh, is it visible now? Hello. No, no it is still. Oh, uh, no, madam, it is not visible. Madam, after clicking a sharing screen, after that, click on the particular slide. You have to click on okay. share. Start share. Is it visible now? Uh, no, still not visible, madam. Uh, so, dear madam, you are finding one green button down. Yeah, oh, I have. Uh, I have clicked that, and I have even clicked multiple participants can. I mean, one participant can share at a time, but still, no, I don't. No, not know multiple. I, uh just you we can start share is it visible now uh still not visible madam uh, share screen and after this you have to click on that particular ppt yeah i have clicked on that ppt Uh, Ma'am, is it possible? Can we operate from our side if we uh, if uh, we are having a content, uh, the the PPT? No, can but uh, just let me check one once. Valera, madam. Now yeah. is it visible? No, no. Yes, yes, yeah. yes it's, it's visible. You can no. make it out of the full view mode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, sorry for this uh, inconvenience. Uh, let us start with the session. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the college for uh, such an interesting webinar. We are having this webinar on the background of COVID-19. And when COVID-19 and Ayurveda comes, uh, we are hearing different views. On one side, we are hearing that uh, Prince Charles story that Ayurveda was uh, responsible or Ayurveda was not responsible. Somebody is claiming something from Ayurveda. On other side, Patanjali is promoting Ayurveda. So what is it exactly? It is extremely confusing situation for all of us to understand, especially those who are not from Ayurveda, to understand what it is really and how Ayurveda can be helpful in this situation. If we see the current trends in the market, the search for immunity powers, uh, I mean, the search for immunity boosters uh, from Ayurveda are on high rise. On the other side, the formulations like Chavan Prash, also uh, there is a sharp hike in demand amid the coronavirus situation. Uh, as it has been rightly said in the beginning, Ayurveda has been a natural recourse for many, ranging from grandma's home remedies, Google recommendations, self-prescription, but unfortunately and rarely an advice from a qualified Ayurveda physician. If we see like why we need immunity and what is it, uh, how it is related with COVID-19, as Dr. Aparna has said that uh, there is no vaccine available till today at this point, at this time point, though there are several candidates in different stages of development, we still do not have any vaccine. So only effective prophylaxis which is available to us is personal protection. And that is only responsible, I mean, that is only accountable for the prevention of disease. When it comes to arresting disease progression, limiting disease severity, there is something cytokine storm about which we are hearing, and there also immunity can play a role. Have we ever thought that we always think in this way that why this person is suffering, why this person, but why not this person is suffering? Why some patients are getting cured and some patients, uh, in some patients, the severity is limited or it is arrested at some time point. So there is some role of immunity in this whole COVID picture. Even the post-infection recovery and prevention of reinfection, which is now happening in China, 
that the reinfection phase has started. So in that phase also, fatigue, stress, quality of life are the issues where immunity is certainly responsible or is accountable for. So what Ayurveda says, is it like popping up some pill and we will get an answer from Ayurveda? Definitely no. So Ayurveda as a health science, I would just like to spend two slides on this, that what Ayurveda talks about whole this situation, about immunity. So basically, objective of Ayurveda is maintenance of health and management of diseases. So you can see that maintenance of health is a first objective and management of diseases come afterward. The approach is like soil and seed. Ayurveda believes that soil has to be good. So host defense is a first priority as per Ayurveda. Health is defined as per Ayurveda as an equipoise of dosha. They, they are the functional entities as per Ayurveda. Dhatu, they are structural or uh, tissues or structural elements, and the mala, that is metabolic waste products. There is a word, Vyadhik Shamatva, which uh, can be translated as resistance to diseases, and that in, implicates uh, like through improving tissue quality. It is not a Vyadhik Shamatva which we see like in today's that vaccination and all this kind of concept was not there, but improvement of tissue quality. The structural elements should be of good uh, quality, of excellence, improving the physical and mental strength and improving the adoptive capacity. This was concept of Ayurveda of Vyadik Shamatva. When it comes to COVID-19, the doshas involved, this, is, this may be a little difficult to understand for those who are not from Ayurveda field, but just to have an idea how Ayurveda looks at COVID-19. That vata and kapha, these two doshas are involved and primarily the rasa dhatu, that is the first primordial dhatu is involved in the COVID-19. What is the interesting fact of all these things is what I said in the beginning, that why certain people are getting uh, affected and why not certain people are getting affected. Although all health, um, I mean, there are many people who are working on frontline, but not all health workers are getting affected. There is a 10% or 20% of health worker population which is getting uh, this uh, particular COVID-19. So what is that? So Ayurveda talks that there is a concept like Khavaigunya, which directly has a resemblance with weak immune system. If there is a immune system, there is weakness of immune system, then these people are likely to have the COVID-19. So immunity is an essential thing. Ayurveda has described some of the facts of immunity, although not in the terms which we know today. And obviously the approach of Ayurveda, Ayurveda is a holistic science. So the approach of Ayurveda is more comprehensive. It is not just popping up a pill or taking churn prash and it will cure all your issues. So there are different approaches such as Hita Ahara, that is wholesome diet, yoga, panchakarma, sadvritta, achar rasayan, dinacharya, ritucharya, aushadha, and then ultimately the rasayan therapy. So these are the different avenues which Ayurveda offers when it comes to immunity. So let us see one by one each of these. First of all, diet or ahara. This is a very interesting uh, concept of Ayurveda that uh, everything, the happiness or suffering, everything comes from ahara, that is diet. Diet is an essential thing of all therapeutics according to Ayurveda. It is said that if wholesome diet is given in a planned way, there is no need for separate medical treatment. We can call it as a prophylactic nutrition. While if unwholesome diet is being permitted, the advantage of treatment becomes uh, questionable. That means it indicates the clinical nutrition or medical nutrition therapy, which is given in case of certain diseases. So uh, somebody has referred to this Ministry of Ayush guidelines. I think Dr. Singh has referred. So Ayush has given some tips like which can be included in our daily diet or daily consumption list. And it includes uh, herbal teas with tulsi, dalchini, kali milch, shunthi, and munakka. Golden milk that is specifically named as haldi powder in uh, hot milk, buns, uh, uh, bun glass in a, uh, twice a day and chavan prash. So this is nothing but a prophylactic nutrition which Ayush ministry has advised for all of us to take during this period. Yoga is, uh, I have deliberately not translated yoga because there is no translation. Everything or every concept of Ayurveda cannot be actually translated. 
yoga is generally considered or taken as asanas it is taken as a synonym of asanas but actually it is not like that yoga has eight different steps yama niyama asana pratyaya pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi and all these steps or all these aspects of yoga are important in the current situation in current scenario and uh, they are uh, some or other way responsible for uh, immunity building so what are the yamas they are nothing but the behavioral and ethical considerations like how to behave in society all these uh, there are five rules which are given under yama that how we should behave in the society niyam is personal health and hygiene and i would like to reiterate that of these there are five niyamas also like yama and one of the niyama is shauchya that is hygiene and that has been very much emphasized in yoga that is bahya shuddhi and abhyantar shuddhi both kind of shauchya both kind of hygienic practices are insisted as a part of niyama then asana whole body exercises and in this period when we are in lockdown we cannot go outside we cannot do any exercise asanas are proving of great help pranayama these are the breathing exercises as we all know pratyahara is control on sense organs control on desires that we everybody is now dying to go out dying to have hotel food dying, dying to see movies what not but this is what is taught under pratyahara and dhyana dharana and samadhi are the meditative practices so from first lockdown we are hearing that if you cannot go outside then go inside so dharana dhyan and samadhi these three things these three facts these three aspects these three steps of yoga are uh, talking about this meditation and uh, meditative practices and there are many interesting papers i need not to give you whole list but this particular paper i found very interesting that effects of mind body therapies on the immune uh, system meta analysis and one of the aspect here which was studied was antiviral immune responses have also been although it is a meta analysis it was it is highlighted on the antiviral immune responses and it is nice to read during this session uh, dur during this period there are of course many papers like how pranayam improves the respiratory health or general health health in general also so all these papers all these references all these material can be useful during this period so yoga definitely helps us but remember yoga is not equal to asanas and yoga has much broader perspective when it comes to ayurveda panchakarma is one of another concept which we all hear about and these are the therapeutic procedures we grossly know the word panchakarma and uh, we have some uh, abstract ideas like what are the panchakarma i'm sorry if anybody somebody is expert in this field but these are basically main five procedures and few additional procedures are also involved in uh, panchakarma i am going to show you some procedures but what is the basic principle of uh, the panchakarma procedures that is uh, according to ayurveda it is said that cleansing or purifying the body by removing toxins now toxins we can take in terms of reactive oxygen species or immune complexes due to undigested food or what not and prevention and promotion of health is also an objective of panchakarma since ayurved has this basic objective that prevention of health so as panchakarma one of the therapeutic modality of ayurveda also focuses on prevention of health first and it is also used as a part of treatment in many diseases panchakarma have local effects as well as systemic effects some uh, karmas which are listed under panchakarma have local effects but majority of them and basically the main five procedures have systemic effects and in this covid scenario what is important that the panchakarma can strengthen the mucosal barrier the entry points and uh, thereby help in building the immunity so we, which are the different kinds of panchakarma which can be practiced the for skin there is abhyanga that is body massage for nasal mucosa through which the virus is likely to go inside the body nasya instillation of medicated oil drops through nostrils oral mucosa Uh, for oral mucosa there are procedures like kaval that is oil pulling and you will find in uh, enough literature on every this concept i mean there are papers available on oil pulling there are effects of uh, gargling like how it uh, builds the uh, immunity of oral mucosa 
For eye mucosa, also there are procedures described such as tarpan, which is application of medicated ghee around the eyes. So these all procedures are basically for strengthening of the respective mucosa or preventing the entry of foreign material inside the body. There is a process uh, called Verman uh, that is induced emesis, and uh, you might have heard about this. That there is a whole procedure. Uh, before uh, for four uh, five to seven days ghee is given internally and then woman or the msc is induced by giving some medicines and uh, it is said that this woman procedure eliminates uh, kapha dosha from body and as i have shown you earlier in the covid pathology that according to ayurved covid is because of the kapha dosha so if we implement this although there are feasibility issues but this can help in um, you know, Uh, i mean throwing out or expelling the kapha out of body there is a procedure called as bashpa sweda that is steaming uh, using hot water with herbal oils and this has also been given as a part of ayush ministry advisory so these are the different panchakarma procedures or different therapeutic procedures i would rather say because uh, vaman is the only uh, vaman and nasya are the only procedures from the main five panchakarma procedures included here but all these procedures can be helpful in some or other other way to build immunity there is one interesting paper which is published on uh, this uh, woman woman uh, procedure this uh, basically woman was administered in uh, patients with asthma and uh, it has been reported that uh, it uh, modulates the cytokines so maybe this is useful in the situ situation of uh, cytokine storm and uh, there is one more project which was uh, done through the uh, prime minister's office uh, principal scientific advisor to prime minister and through that also uh, i was part of that project and we have done the studies on woman and nasya both that uh, nasya in chronic rhinitis and woman in the asthmatic patients and even in that project we have observed that uh, both these procedures have effect on uh, cytokines it uh, down regulates the anti inflammatory uh, pro inflammatory cytokines like uh, i i um, interferon and uh, uh, i mean it uh, up regulates the anti inflammatory cytokines and down regulates the pro inflammatory cytokines then comes the interesting part of ayurveda that is dinacharya and ritucharya and uh, this is like uh, according to uh, seasons you can see down that uh, these vata pitta and kapha dosha they increase in different seasons and go down in different seasons and when they are at peak they develop their own diseases in the body and they show their presence in the body that time and they uh, manifest themselves as some or other disease during that period so it is uh, told in ayurveda text that uh, suppose if we see this uh, pink line that kapha dosha increases in vasanta ritu that is the time around february march when kapha ritu is at the peak and we should administer vapana to eliminate this excess kapha so that uh, throughout the year there won't be any diseases this is the concept of seasonal panchakarma in ayurveda so at different time points different doshas increase and we have to administer panchakarma accordingly or we have to change our whole lifestyle not only panchakarma but whole lifestyle like what we are eating how we are what activities we are involved in everything should change as per this increase and decrease of dosha so dinacharya and ritucharya this is about the season but even in a day in a circadian uh, 24 hour pattern the doshas increase and decrease at different time points and uh, accordingly we have to change our activities in a day so uh, dinacharya and ritucharya or daily or circadian or seasonal regimens and nothing but the dynamic adaptation to circadian and seasonal changes and on this slide i would like to just uh, tell you that vasanta ritu is in february and march and now the, there is a grishma ritu april may and uh, gradually we are going towards the varsha ritu june july when rainy season will start since everybody is from india i am sure these terms are very much uh, understandable so uh, although we are in lockdown although the corona situation is same what we were following in vasanta ritu should not be exactly similar now in grishma ritu so corona is same the uh, patients and i mean the hosts are same but since the season has changed we have to change our dietary patterns we have to change our activities 
and we cannot follow the same thing throughout. This is uh, just a diagrammatic representation of the same thing. So Dinacharya and Ritucharya basically talks about the environmental influences on the doshas and uh, Charya is conduct, so organizing various majors, let it be diet, let it be panchakarma, let it be anything, organizing these various majors to bring harmony and coexistence with nature or the biological clock as we call it today is Dinacharya and Ritucharya. So daily sleep and awakening patterns according to light and dark cycles. I mean, in lockdown, any, everybody is waking up uh, at any time and sleeping at any time. This is not which is advisable because ultimately somewhere it uh, uh, brings some impairment to the dosha balance and then hampers the whole cascade of the things which are explained in Ayurveda. And the seasonal panchakarma, which I told you, is a largely a explored area of uh, Ayurveda therapeutics. So some people are trying to find out that those who have taken uh, Paman in the Vasanta Rutu in 2019 or 2018, are they being saved from this corona? So there are some studies being going on about this concept as well. So key to prevention uh, of most diseases is prophylaxis. So can we administer the panchakarmas before, for example, if there is a malaria season in uh, rainy season, malaria uh, going to happen in a rainy season, can we plan something? Can we have some uh, charya or can we have some code of conduct before that? This is the Ayurveda approach towards the dinacharya and ritucharya. And lastly, Ayurveda also talks about sadvritta. Sadvritta is uh, nothing but uh, behavioral and ethical conduct. Uh, ethical considerations, so how there should be interpersonal relationships, how there should be social etiquettes, and uh, of course the measures to tackle stress, anxiety, and other psychological factors, which is uh, very, very important in today's scenario. And on this Sadvritta aspect also, there are papers being published in journals like Brain Behavior and Immunity. You can see here the paper that where psychoneuroimmunology, because this whole thing that's with the ultimately affects the psychoneuroimmune axis of the body and where psychoneuroimmunology and the uh, meaning responses meet, that is uh, this paper. It is very interesting paper. So uh, there is a material available and there is scientific uh, basis for a, uh, every other concept which is there in Ayurveda. Coming to the last part of my presentation, which is about herbals, minerals, and formulations. We know we have heard many formulations. Javan Prash is one of them. So we keep hearing the names. In Ayurveda, the inventory of plant drugs is limitless. Uh, though I have mentioned minerals also, uh, basically I'm talking about plant drugs, that there is a limitless inventory. You will find many, 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 many plants described in Ayurveda, which have uh, diverse role in disease pathology, in uh, preventing, in treating the diseases. But the most interesting approach or most interesting concept in today's scenario is Rasayanal drugs, which is an unique approach and uh, which has been propagated by Ayurveda for health promotion and rejuvenation. And there is a lot of work being done on these Rasayan concepts. Uh, uh, Rasayanal drugs like uh, Haritaki, Terminalia, Chebula, Amalaki, Phylanthra, Simplica, Avla, which we call as uh, Tinospora cordifolia, which Dr. Aparna Deshmukh mentioned in her uh, uh, introductory remarks, and uh, many more Rasayana drugs uh, are there. They are the unique drugs because they have multifaceted effects. Uh, they do not work one is in a fashion, one is to one, like one targeted disease, and they act like that, but they have multifaceted uh, effects. Uh, on multi-systemic effects. And these drugs are basically promoted during this period. There are many research works being carried out on these concepts. And the assigned drugs have been shown to improve or uh, work on the cell mediated and moral immunity. They have been, uh, there have been research papers which are on immunoadjuvant activities of assigned drugs in cancer therapeutics, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory mechanisms of many resigned drugs. Piper longum is one of the drugs. So many drugs, uh, people, people. So when many such drugs have been explored uh, in uh, for these activities. And a uh, uh, drug on which uh, Dr. Parana, she mentioned about this, Tinospora cordifolia. And uh, even I was a part of team under Dr. Uh, late Dr. Sharadin Gidahankar, which has worked on Tinospora cordifolia. It is a giloi or guluel in Marathi. In, in Hindi, it is called as giloi. And uh, 
it is also one of the assigned plants it is available widely in india basically it is uh, administered for uh, diabetes mellitus and jaundice but as i said that the uh, rasayana drugs have a broad spectrum they are like broad spectrum uh, they have broad spectrum of activities and so diabetes mellitus and jaundice are just a representative disease where it is mainly used it contains various alkaloids and its phytochemistry has also been well studied which i want to show essentially and immunostimulatory effects of uh, this particular drug uh, the water extract of this drug we have used water extract because it falls in a uh, principles of ayurveda so we have used that we have uh, done the formulation according to ayurveda using stems and uh, carried out the studies and we have shown that uh, tinospora cordifolia increases wbc counts and neutropenia uh, it uh, stimulates neutrophil phagocytosis in normal volunteers and in patients with obstructive jaundice as well it stimulates phagocytosis by macrophages uh, using the carbon clearance assay in experimental rats this was shown and it's uh, uh, release the gmcsf uh, which is a growth factor for granulocytes and macrophages and uh, i would like to tell you that this work was done almost 20 years back and afterwards lot of work has been done on tinospora cordifolia and interestingly tinospora cordifolia is one of the major drug on which ministry of ayush is now working on as an adjuvant uh, and maybe uh, in case of prevention independently also for the prevention of covid 19 and as an adjuvant to the standard care of uh, treatment uh, for the covid 19 with allopathy medicines the, the uh, protocols are already ready and the trial can start any time now so this is uh, all from my side just uh, like to summarize that ayurveda doesn't uh, talk about one medicine one pill and it doesn't talk about that one pill will be suitable for everything so uh, everybody so according to the host and according to the disease we have to select whatever is uh, appropriate for the condition and use it for our benefit so with this uh, i would like to uh, conclude here uh, thank you very much thank you so much ma'am for your so much informative lecture there are so many questions which have come but uh, i think we will take the session from uh, dr girish tillu as well and then whatever the questions have come we will take at the end of the session yeah so now we are proceeding to have the second invited talk from dr girish tillu may i kindly request uh, ms shweta sharma from department of biotechnology to give a brief introduction of dr girish tillu please yes sir a uh, very good evening to one and all present it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our next guest speaker dr girish tillu who is a md ayurved and phd health sciences he is a vaidya scientist fellow of center for complementary and integrative health in uh, savitri bai phule pune university uh, he has 16 years of research experience in interdisciplinary environment and 12 years of uh, clinical experience his uh, research has included drug development for degenerative and autoimmune diseases and uh, he has also been involved in 20 clinical trials interestingly his research also includes uh, development of diagnostic technology health awareness uh, software and mobile technology based health informatics uh, he has uh, worked closely with ministry of india as a part of various organizations like cedac for knowledge based development on integrative medicine Uh, he has also been a part of two fire planning commissions of research and industry subcommittee of ayush ministry of india uh, he has four patents to his name he has authored a large number of book chapters and research papers with a total uh, number of 328 citations on google scholar uh, he has also been working on observational research methods and data mining of clinical practice data at im hospital at transdisciplinary university bangalore so he is the perfect combination of uh, someone who knows both ancient science and modern technology and uh, we are indeed privileged to have you today sir as the guest speaker 
and uh, without wasting any more time i would request uh, sir to kindly initiate his talk okay am i am i audible and the slides are visible yes sir perfectly you can proceed okay thank you very much uh thank you very much for uh, this opportunity and i'm grateful to the uh, institution uh, this is very um, important initiative we all love to have healthy long life and i'm sure everybody uh, uh, everybody will li like to live longer and with a very happy energetic productive healthy life but the question is how can we achieve it and is there any pill for a healthy long life how i can protect myself how i can uh, be free from several diseases so let us discuss these two important questions today and i really liked the way dr deshmukh described this event unlocking ideas in lockdown and this idea that is how to boost our immunity with ayurveda that we are going to discuss in next uh, 15 to 20 minutes we all know the honorable prime minister of india modi ji talked about saptapadi seven steps towards health to protect ourselves in this unprecedented pandemic of covid and ayurveda is one of an important step towards health uh, and modi ji ne bahut bola hai ki kaadha peete rahi hai to kaun sa kaadha kaise pina hai iske bare mein bhi hum thodi si baat karenge we all know we humans and microbes they are people they were considering earlier that we are neighbors but microbes they are part of us and many times the scientists they say that the microbe cells on and in our body they outnumber human cells and we become com complete human along with invisible microbiome and hence microbes not all microbes are pathogens not all microbes are uh, problematic we also need microbes for our metabolism we also harbor many useful microbes and there are studies coming up those those really talk about which are the helpful and harmful microbes and how we can maintain them but it is all about a dynamic interaction between humans and microbes can we really avoid them the question is no and if we test ourselves for Uh, various infections we will find say we have several antibodies against so many microbes many times apparently healthy individuals they might have uh, undergone several infections and is immunity is only about infection this is another important and fundamental aspect do only microbes cause diseases if you want to live healthy long life then microbes are not the only thing that we should talk about we should think about and do about it we have lot many abnormal cells being produced in our body thousands of them every day in everybody's we have several metabolic wastes immune system also deals with that we have removal of toxins pollutants dust smoke various particles and we have to maintain a balance we have several ongoing metabolic processes thousands of proteins thousands of metabolites lack of coordination can also lead to diseases stress imbalance and so many things they can lead to diseases and sound meta sound metabolism or sound immunity that deals with maintaining all those processes and not just infection but now in this covid days our today's uh, next few minutes we are going to discuss infectious diseases but we should not leave other aspects of immunity and hence immunity is not only killing microbes immunity is not a negative concept immunity is a very positive concept it is pro health concept it is 
maintaining health, maintaining homeostasis and leading to happiness. Now, everyone is well versed with this dangerous figure and the scientists, they have tried to estimate the weight of the entire coronavirus that is troubling uh, all of us. And they will say that they say that it is not just one gram of all the virus pulled together all over the world, but all these virus, they, it, this small particle made us sit in our homes. Small particle locked down the entire world. But it is not just virus. It is not just a microbe. It is a triad. And a triad that deals with agent or coronavirus, for example, environment, and we all, we all are sitting in uh, our homes and uh, worrying about diseases. This triad, the interaction between these three that leads to disease, as well as the proper communication, or if we uh, are able to avoid, or if we want to make ourselves stronger, healthier, then we can avoid the you know, infection. And hence, this trial is important in terms of maintaining health and preventing diseases. It is not just virus, but it is all uh, a communication. And hence, there are so many characteristics. For example, who get gets infected? Which what are the person characteristics? And clinicians and scientists they are finding out the risk factors. For example, comorbid conditions, age, immunocompromised state, immune response, various person characteristics, the amount of exposure, the virulence of that virus, and the place population demographics, social and cultural context, temperature, and so on. There are so many factors. They are related to the interaction between a host and a causative agent or coronavirus for today's problem. And hence, we need to think about coronavirus, of course, but we also need to think about ourselves. We also need to think about our environment and the infection is not the only challenge. Now, how we can protect ourselves? Let us discuss that in a few minutes. We all know the virus through environment is affecting us, but at the same time, we can leverage on certain components of in, or environmental factors around us and turn down the situation and get immunity against coronavirus. How to get that? I'm going to share some of the practical tips steps to immunity, what we can avoid. We can avoid the respiratory diseases. We can avoid several other diseases and conditions. For example, in this uh, warm climate, we tend to uh, consume a lot many cold food, cold water, um, beverages like ice cream, etc. We should avoid such respiratory conditions that can lead to uh, symptoms like common cold, increase in kapha and va that leads to increase in secretions or increase in uh, inflammation. What we can maintain? We can maintain proper digestion. Apart from input or apart from consuming any particular diet, we also need to think about whether it is getting digested. Is our digestive capacity, I would call it as agony, is proper to digest that particular thing. Proper digestion nutrition of tissues and proper excretion. All these things, they are very personalized. We cannot make it generalized or standardized, but it is time to look at our own self and think about ourselves. Sound sufficient sleep. This is the lockdown is the time to experiment on ourselves. We have to observe our metabolic processes. We have to observe what we actually do and what that leads to, what we can digest, how we can excrete, how we can sleep, how we can wake up. Do we exercise? It is needed. What's about my mental health? What about my concentration? Do, have, do I have uh, some habit that I get 
uh, indulged in or I enjoy it, can I get can I get a good concentration in some activity in daily routine? What is my daily day night cycle? All these things they are important because Dr. Bale Rao she just touched upon some of the aspects about chronobiology or this is the cycle and health is nothing but the continuous interaction between us and the environment around us. Virus is a part of environment around us. If we drink some kadha every day, eat chavantrash in kg kilograms, but if we fail to maintain all those things, proper digestion, proper nutrition, excretion, sound, sufficient sleep, exercise, mental health, etc., proper day-night cycle, then it will be not useful because health or immunity is not just a pill. It is the combined effect of so many things. And hence, Ayurveda tips for boosting immunity. Friends, the concept of medicine is also changing fast. Earlier, we used to think that the antibiotics, they can get protection or antivirals for uh, corona situation, but it is not so. It is also our immunity. It is also our nutrition. The immunity depends on our nutrition. Nutrition depends on our lifestyle. Lifestyle depends on our mental state of health. Mental state of health, again, depends on our habits. Habits depend on our thoughts. So many things. And hence, the newer form of medicine, which is now coming, it is called as lifestyle medicine, behavioral medicine. Yes, a pill is a medicine. An antibiotic is a medicine. An analgesic or a painkiller is a medicine. But lifestyle is also a medicine. Behavior is also a medicine. Our response to stressors and triggers is also a medicine. And hence, Health is in our own hands and we can modulate our health. We can really uh, make ourselves uh, selves stronger. And hence, small tips, simple tips for boosting immunity are enlisted uh, here. And uh, I'm going to discuss those in a couple of uh, minutes. Warm water, drinking warm water is very helpful, but again, not too much hot water because a few people can cannot tolerate too much hot water, but certainly warm water is beneficial. Also water treated with various herbal drugs and spices. I'm sure uh, in this gathering, there are a few colleagues from Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu or South India. In South India, when we visit, we get uh, to drink water treated with several herbal drugs or spices. We can use several kitchen spices like dry ginger, cardamom, cinnamon, clove, nut grass, khas, Indian sarsa berilla or sariva, coriander, hell seeds, or acacia or kath can also be useful for drinking water. Of course, for day-to-day -day drinking water, which can a very dilute, uh, very dilute solution or a very dilute mixture of water and the spices. Certainly, a kadha can be again made up of all those spices. We can add basil or tulsi. We can add uh, lemongrass. We can add. Uh, bale kapata and or several other uh, 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 herbs, and herbs and spices and medicinal plants which are available in our vicinity. These are a few more tips for boosting immunity. We all know the golden milk, but this golden milk added with ghee that gives extra protection and uh, nourishment and oleation, especially this is recommended for elderly. We can have morning and evening. Plenty of warm water after duty, put cuss or coriander seeds in water bottle. And uh, this light or this tips there, especially for people, those are working uh, 
uh, outdoor, especially you know, people, they are working in healthcare, police, various essential services. We need to protect them. Thus, we can protect ourselves and we can help people with something like this. We should have light and fresh food with minimum spices and minimum oils. When I say spicier, uh, chili powder and other uh, flavors which we use unnecessarily most of the times. That with all six tastes, are some bitter, pungent, and astringent. All six tastes, they are important in our day-to-day -day diet. Yoga, sana, breathing exercises, meditation, exercise, at least for 30 minutes, they are important components for maintaining our health and boosting our immunity. As Dr. Supriya also touched upon some of the points about Panchakarma, mouth rinse and gargles with warm liquids, say warm water, turmeric water, or after we rinse the mouth uh, at bedtime or early morning, we can also use 10 milligram of oils, say coconut oil or sesame oil for mouth rinse. We can uh, keep that oil uh, as oil pooling in our mouth for at least five minutes. Nasal oil application, application of two to three drops of oils, medicated oil or cow ghee or coconut oil, they can be applied in nostrils and that gives an extra protection. Steam inhalation and hot fermentation with aromatic oils such as menthol, they provide a very good relief uh, in case of nasal and throat congestion. Uh, and it is helpful for avoiding tendency uh, of various respiratory problems. Whenever we find any symptom, we have to remember that any symptom that we feel or that our body presents is for our care, for our attention. And symptoms are not to be uh, suppressed, but the symptoms, they tell us the present status of our body. Our organs talk with us through symptoms and we should care, look for those symptoms carefully. And if those symptoms persist for more than two days, then we have to get uh, help or guidance from um, our family physician or from doctors. Especially in COVID days, if we suffer symptoms related to respiratory condition, then we should also have an alert and do something which is uh, re required to protect ourselves. At the same time, many times, more than disease, what we doctors, we experience is a phobia for the disease. Whenever, uh, uh, you must remember, you may remember, whenever we uh, used to study in schools and read about diseases, we used to feel that we are suffering from that particular diseases. And hence, if we need not to have that coronaphobia, because if we protect ourselves, then be assured that you will protect your health and you will get added benefits in terms of uh, good immunity that will protect or from coronavirus. We need to start all those steps, especially to prepare ourselves uh, after lockdown situation, when things will open up, uh, when we are going to be at higher risk of infection and we need to boost our immunity and um, take this, all the tips into consideration. For maintaining immune response, as Dr. Supriya and Dr. Deshmukh, they also hinted at, some of the medicinal herbs, they, are, they maintain our immune response or they maintain our immune balance because our body should not, uh, should not, exa should not have exaggerated immune response Neither we should not have delayed immune response. We have, our immune responses should be balanced. Otherwise, we will land up into extreme conditions 
like anaphylaxis reaction or allergic reaction, or the, the other end is um, immunodeficiency. Our responses, immune responses should be proper. They should be adaptable. Means our immune response should be able to cope up with the changed situations. Our immune responses should cope up to the stress. But for that purpose, we need to tune our body accordingly. As we tune our body, our muscles, our joints with specific exercises, we tune our heart with some of the cardio exercises. We uh, really, uh, we, 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 uh, if we eat proper diet, if we consume proper uh, medication, then we can tune our body and that will be helpful for fighting uh, uh, infections. And certain botanicals her or herbs, that is Ashwagandha, Guruchi, Shatavari, uh, Amalaki or Amla or Yashtimadu or Mulethi, they are important for maintaining immune response. And um, uh, just a couple of days ago, our Indian health minister uh, announced that Indian government and uh, Ayush ministry with Indian Council of Medical Research and Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, they are jointly undertaking clinical trials on Vidania somnifera, Tinospora cordifolia, and Muleti or Glyceriza glabra. So these are very uh, well-known herbs that, that, that can protect us. But one uh, important thing that happens with Ayurveda and we often experience this, that familiarity breeds contempt. Atiparichaya tavadnya. We know so many things about it and hence we never practice it. We take for granted so many things and that we should avoid. Just practice, experience. Uh, uh, a Marathi said, we have to just experience a verse just experience one health tip and that will be really helpful for boosting our immunity and uh, prevention of our diseases. And hence, we can just turn situation around. But we need to main, remember that many times this, all these generalizations uh, may not be true for everyone. Everybody may have a different response and I'm suggesting some of the projects because I was told uh, that there are many science teachers, there are many teachers, researchers. Can we do small projects on uh, in this COVID situation? Can we experience ourselves? Our small projects means observe ourselves, observe our body system with a third party uh, perspective, with a neutral perspective. What we know about our surroundings flora and fauna and their uses, their specialities, how nature created them. What are the medicines in my kitchen, in my home, in my surrounding, in my garden? What is my nature, my swahav, or how am I, who am I? Who, what I am susceptible to? What causes, uh, what leads uh, which diet troubles me? Which diet comforts me? What is helpful for me? What is harmful for me? Can we do swan projects? Can we experience on ourselves? Simple things. One particular thing related to diet, lifestyle, our behavior, our hobbies, not just tinospora cordifolia, but our hobby, our interest, our calm nature, our attitude are also helpful for uh, boosting our immunity. And hence, uh, there are many, many, mm, many, many verses, many uh, wisdom in our culture that we need to really. This coronavirus has ma made us remember that we are part of environment and we have to respect our environment. Many times we also need to maintain a safe distance from several animals. We need to interact properly uh, with 
our surroundings and hence the concept of one health that is human health animal health environmental health and maintaining peace harmony and health uh, is the prayer uh, that is uh, in with this i would i will conclude my um, talk with this prayer sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukha bhagavet friends this covid situation is really testing us uh, and really uh, posed a challenge but this is also an opportunity to face this challenge to synchronize all our resources including our sharir atma manas and hence the prasanna atma indriya and mana these are the uh, indicators of good health let us achieve those with all those efforts thank you very much and wish you all the best thank you very much for this opportunity i thank uh, deshmukh madam vaidya sir and chakravarti madam for this opportunity thank you so much sir it was indeed a great pleasure and pride to be a part of this webinar with you it's a good thing that we are all sharing the platform with the stalwarts from ayurved sir there are many questions regarding particular things there are so many questions which are coming up from the student but we would like to take one or two which are indicative so can we proceed with that sir uh, please Uh, Dr. Supriya uh, and myself, uh, we both can. Yeah. Uh, yes. May I know Dr. Supriya Bhalera is also there? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, there is one question which has been posed uh, by the students. Most of the students are asking that there are so many things which have been suggested. That one is saying somebody is saying that you should take tulsi. Somebody is saying you you should take lemon. Somebody is suggesting honey. we suggested kadha warm water so what exactly should be consumed to uh, boost the immune system this is the question asked so now as i have explained and even dr virish has explained uh, yeah. if we talk about corona specifically we do not have a specific answer to this question like whether yeah. this will improve the immunity towards corona virus we do not have a uh, answer clear answer but as we have explained that there are ways in ayurveda to improve immunity and all these ways can be helpful whatever may be the disease condition whatever may be whatever may be the situation but these uh, kadhas or these uh, drugs will be helpful in some or other way to bring uh, to improve your immunity for sure okay uh, giri sir your answer please hello hello hi yes, ah. sir your opinion about this can you please repeat the question uh hello? many people have suggested sir many people suggesting many of the things to boost the immunity such as uh, somebody saying to take lemon somebody saying that you are going to take the black pepper you are going to have the golden milk so what exactly is there any particular uh, you know remedy which can be suggested by only for covid 19 uh actually uh, you know uh, not uh, a specific remedy uh, but we are talking about boosting uh, our health and uh, immunity uh, we can also uh, you know uh, as i suggested experiment on ourselves because uh, pitta prakruti people they cannot tolerate ma- lemon much those people yes. those have uh, as a tendency of uh, hyperacidity or uh, hot flushes they cannot tolerate black pepper long pepper or certain spices so uh, it is also uh, a matter of experiencing and experimenting on ourselves and for that matter for example we we need to go to the basics Uh, we need to know about ourselves and hence i suggested very uh, simple projects we can maintain a diary just one a four size paper that will tell us what troubles us what is helpful for me and what is harmful for for me uh, health and immunity is all about not just about uh, knowing a substance but it is all about knowing ourselves knowing myself and we need to do uh, the same thing 
Okay. <coughs> Uh, sir, there is one more question which has come up to Supriya Madam as well as Girish Sir. I would like to pose. Everybody is asking about how can we maintain the psychological and mental health. Is there any kind of a remedy which is there in Ayurveda? Because rather than physical, now the problem has come to the psychological and mental level. So, both of you, can you please comment upon this? Supriya Madam, please. Uh, as I have told, in case of uh, herbal drugs also. i would again like like to say the same thing there is no fixed protocol in ayurved which can be implemented or which can be used for every individual it is like as Giri, dr girish said that it is experiment on yourself and you have to find out that what is the best thing for me for example somehow my means i myself cannot concentrate during meditation but if you ask me to write something related to science or some uh, some read some interesting article it is like a meditation for me so if you have to improve your concentration you have to do the things which you like the most and what ayurveda tells is uh, there is not a fixed protocol but the meditative practice also can have different shades different meanings and you have to implement as per uh, convenience and uh, which comforts you the most this is absolutely. my answer for the absolutely uh, yeah here is the same kind of answer from your side yes uh, i concur with uh, dr supriya and hence it is not about uh, you know searching something or taking some you know, medicines for mental health um that really boosts health of that pharmaceutical company but uh, uh, ayurveda is a science of common sense Uh, really how uh, we can uh, not just uh, you know it is about mental health but how we can enjoy our life how uh, we can have uh, good interests how we can be creative how we can be productive and how uh, we can interact with surrounding that particular approach and hence many times we feel that uh, health is nothing but our approach or our thought process yeah uh the last question sir what uh, everybody is asking about ayush the ministry of government of india has suggested some of the remedies for this particular period where we need to improve our uh, immune system that eating chavan praj or taking some kind of a kada or some kind of a medicine uh, so any comment upon that uh, supriya madam as i have for, uh, told in the beginning that approach of ayurved is uh, like soil first and then seed so boosting the host i mean improving the immunity and uh, improving the host defense is the priority from ayurveda perspective so all these uh, kadhas and whatever has been told by ayush ministry are to improve your immunity in general i'm i cannot uh, say that they are in particular against covid but they are for uh, strengthening the soil so that the uh, i mean the micro microbiome will i mean the microorganisms will not affect you so making yourself so strong that the things will not affect you is ayurveda's approach and that's why the ayush ministry's protocol is uh giri sir i think he has given the link in the chat box where we can all visit uh, to this particular link and we can know about the covid 19 uh any comment on that sir yeah so this is a, an article uh, a scholarly article that says that gives a scientific background of many things which was uh, discussed in uh, today's session by dr supriya and my myself uh, you will find detailed scientific explanation uh, related papers uh, in this link there are many questions that uh, in chat box and i would like to touch uh, some of those uh, somebody ask uh, whether immunity can be enhanced in elderly certainly yes somebody asks uh, uh, yes and uh, uh, we can also follow many things for example we did not talk many things dr supriya uh, just gave example about uh, some daily practices or daily routine uh, and many health interventions like massage many health interventions like having balanced uh, diet that also helps uh yes i think most of the questions uh, have been dealt with 
and uh, we are not in a position to take all the questions due to the time constraint now with the kind permission from honorable principal madam can we conclude the session ma'am yes thank you so much ma'am uh, before we conclude the session may i kindly request uh, dr shashikant asgekar the vice principal of faculty of science to propose the formal vote of thanks dr shashikant asgekar yeah thank you vinay sir am i audible yes sir please okay well uh, thank you dr uh, supriya bhalera and dr girish tilu by joining the desk and uh, enlightening the words of experience on the topic Uh, boosting immunology with ayurveda i am uh, very sure the tips given will be beneficial to maintain optimum health which is an essential requirement during the present scenario of covid-19 uh, thank you both of you for uh, your valuable timing and collaboration with thakur college of science and commerce uh, the organizing committee is also thankful to the management of the thakur college for providing advanced technological support and uh, infrastructure my special thanks to our beloved principal dr mrs chaitali chakravarti for her all time motivation and support thank you madam i must put on the record the efforts of all the members of organizing committee especially dr aparna deshmukh head of the biotechnology department and dr s k singh our iqc coordinator for taking this initiative and selective interesting topic which is a fitting for uh, in the present scenario thank you both of you i must acknowledge the efforts by the technical staff for streaming the webinar smoothly last but not la least thanks for all the participants for joining the webinar because without your participation the event would have been not successful and fruitful also uh, with this uh, kind word of thanks i request everyone everyone uh, stay safe stay at home and take care over to vinit vijay thank you very much thank you so much sir and with the kind permission from the chair uh, dr mrs cd chakravarti we would like to end this session thank you so much both the speakers